Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond, however you're watching, welcome back to the dojo. I'm Ryu, he's Age, we're back for more anime night in the dojo, and this is going to be Don Machi, Season 3, Episode 3. Didn't we just do a Season 3, Episode 3? Yeah, that was Kaguya-sama, that was five minutes ago. Really? Well, thanks for keeping track of that, I'm losing all track of time over here. Anyway, um, yeah, Don Machi, that's, that's what we're doing now. Anyway, um... Coming off last week, Vine sprouted a wing. That was interesting. They had that very serious discussion last week about, uh, you know, whether she's going to be able to stay with them. And even Belle looked kind of on the fence. And it was kind of hit you in the feels there right at the end of the episode. But, uh, yeah, the Beastkin thing seems like it's going to be pretty prevalent. And uh, we discussed that pretty uh, at length at the end of last week. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out is, you know, don't really want to reiterate everything around here. Um, so that's going to be a thing. Um, Ecolos, son of Hypnos. Pretty uh, minor god pull, but, I mean, they can use whoever they want. Kind of uh, interesting that he's kind of in, like, a tracksuit. I mentioned that last week. That was kind of weird. He had that whole discussion on the bench with Hermes over here. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what... Uh, he's capable of because like as he stated he kind of just his familia does what they want and he's just kind of watching and it's all he really wants to do is kind of like watch the world burn basically um it'll be interesting to see what his power is though because whatever you want to call it like one of the major players in his familia basically sent him out to you know go find information which you know we speculated on the whole like can people of can, pe can other people lie to gods in general, or just can they not lie to their own god? Or is it something unique to him? Yeah, at very least, they cannot lie to their own god. We know that much. The thing that's still up in the air is whether or not it's just a case of mortals cannot lie to gods in general. Right, so that, that that's the thing that... Because he walked up to Bell, put his hand on his shoulder, and just legitimately asked him, tell me about the uh, the beastkin, basically, or the... the um, whatever Vina is, I forget the name for it. The uh, Wyvern Beaver. So, it's something it's, with a V. Like it's, it's Vivra or something Vivra, like that. yeah. And tell me what you know about the talking Vivra or something like that, to that effect. And it, it looked like he was trying to potentially use his god power on him, which could be a thing. That or it was just, as a god, him, you know, trying to exert the god influence. You cannot lie to any god kind of deal. But again, this is Bell we're talking about who is immune to that kind of shenanigan as we saw with Ishtar. Yeah, he's And this is least... far less of a shenanigan than just like Ishtar's, you know, like being able to have power over all men. Yeah, he's got some level of immunity to god shenanigans because yeah, he is immune to goddess charms. Right. So um it'll be interesting to see if that gets clarified or is like clarified in the manga or something. Um but Ecolos being like a son of Hypnos, so like Dream Realm kind of thing. I guess it's not far out of the question that he could like bring the truth out of people by asking yeah, them a question. Yeah, he's he's a very minor god, but he has a uh, sleep-related god like Hypnos. Right. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with him. Um, his familia obviously is going to be on the uh, opposite side of the beastkin. I mean, if the intro is to be believed, which generally it is, and we've already talked about how eyes is probably going to be the second half of the season, um, and the Ecolos familia is going to be this first hurdle here with the 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 Xenos, I believe, is what we the, this episode is going to be called, which I speculate is probably just going to be the faction name for uh, the beastkin because you know Xeno mm -hmm. alien, you know. So, yeah, uh, they uh, referring to them as alien is rather fitting because they don't really fit into either human or monster society as there's something like there's basically something in between. Right. And as we saw with Vina, even though she, you know, used her her ability to save a child in front of all those people, she got the, you know, throw fruit and garbage at her treatment. So kind of a unsurprising really uh, it'll be interesting to see how this uh part of the politics game if you will plays out um especially given that you know 
Uranus obviously knows something about this and potentially be... has, you know, followers who are also monsters. Yeah, to be fair, though, about the whole with the whole stoning scene, most of that crowd didn't actually see what happened. It was literally just most of them, the most they became aware of the scenario. It was literally just a monster looming over a girl who was screaming. Right. Which does look bad, but, you know. Anyway, I think that's all we really need to get into going into this one. Personally, uh, you have anything you wanted to say going into this one, Age? Mm, not really. Alrighty, well, we'll see uh, See how the story progresses with potentially uh, seeing one of the uh, other uh, Beastkin characters, that monster characters, whatever you want to call them, Xenos, uh, that have been alluded to. I mean, we got the Harpy last episode, so... We'll see if we get, like, the lizard guy, something like that, um, and what uh, they do with Vina and her uh, current situation. So let's push some buttons and see what happens this week. So here goes something. The Guildmaster wants a word. Uh -huh. Guildmaster? Have we see seen me? the Guildmaster before? Mm, no. Uh -huh. Please deliver these instructions to Bell Cornell of the Hestia Familia. To Mr. Cornell? Do not ask questions. This matter is of a confidential nature. And using Bell and his friends as bait, no less. Uranus, you bastard. The rest is up to you, Osby. Yeah, that pretty much confirms it. Bell? Everything's okay. Bye, Goddess. I'll see you soon. Kay! Be sure to come back in one piece! Uranus is pulling the guild strings and they're trying to deliberately lure out Ecolos. Yeah. Well, here goes. <sighs> My work here is complete. Giving a bit of a closer look at the hand there, I'm pretty sure like it's actually a construct, not a beastkin. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Something tells me that this isn't going to be another secret hot spring. Kind of a bummer. <laughs> One way to use Argonaut. <laughs> Go full Saitama, right to the face. <laughs> nice to meet you. Can I please shake your hand too? Yes, me too! Uh, hey, slow down everyone! <laughs> Spectral Throat Ripper to the face. Of course it is. <laughs> I would like to know your name if that's okay with you. <laughs> well, that's that with the whole one minute of credits at the end of the episode. Yeah, so uh, for anybody wondering, that's how you spell Vine because it's German. I kind of assumed that's where they were going, but yeah, it's definitely with an Earth W <laughs> since we've been quoting a lot of Futurama today. Anyway, uh... <laughs> Well, this pretty much played out as I expected, for the most part. I mean, I assumed once they went off the beaten path, you know, stuff that's off the map in the dungeon is usually, you know, for secret stuff, like the hot spring. Except this was a hot spring of monsters without the hot spring. You know, without the Lunar Lander or the Blackjack. So, yeah, uh, I assumed once they showed off that these monsters were armed that yeah it's it's probably them uh i i will say i didn't think there was going to be this many of them i thought it was going to be like a handful not like small village level worth of uh intelligent uh monsters of all shapes and, and varieties 
I kind of figured that's where we were going. Uh, that it was going to be a group of them. Um, but yeah, no, like I didn't really have any context to say how many of them there were going to be or just that it was going to be this diversified of a group. Yeah, it seems like they have a lot of uh, stuff covered, you know, uh, the goblin types, like bigger, like minotaur types, the lizard men, which seem like native to like floor 19 and 20, which we did skip over floor 19. They just were all of a sudden, boom, they're in floor 20. 19's which... where they've been fighting in like all their grinding lately. 20 right. is the one that they mostly skipped. Right. Um, but yeah, they had a pretty wide variety of uh, creatures in here. So that was definitely a thing. Uh, including this uh, rabbit that can't speak yet, but uh, went straight for the face. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, pretty much called it on all of it. You know, Uranus knew about it. Um, I didn't mention it in the in the live reaction because uh, I just kind of derped on it. But I did notice that like Hestia was looking at the note um, from the guild, mm -hmm. kind of like. You know, they, they brought attention to, like, the border that was in God language, and I was like, that has to say something, right? And I just didn't say it out loud, but... Yeah, uh, no, I figured something was up with that. Yeah, I was just like, there's a hidden message in this thing, right? <laughs> Somewhere. <laughs> and now that we know that the border of the guild uh, parchment is God text, um, or God language, um, that brings up a whole other uh, thing for the future, which they could be, uh, they could use for other things, so... Yeah, um, I guess the only thing that we didn't really get confirmed was um, what the deal is with um, the uh, messenger from Uranus to uh, Hestia. It looked yeah. like like undead, kind of. You know, you mentioned construct. It looked very skeletal, though, as well. So it's either he's some sort of like insectoid monster, or he's a construct of some sort. Right, because they did uh, show off several insect-like creatures. They have like this. Um, the dude up here and that's like the black kind of looks like living energy in a way um mm -hmm. so th there's all kinds of stuff that it could be so one thing that this did also bring up is we were under the assumption this whole time that uranus was still in heaven but no apparently he is on earth right so maybe he's just a like middleman of he is like the mediator which he has the final call to allow the gods to like do their thing uh like in the uh, war game and whatnot so um that yeah that's interesting i i assume that you know but so much for that he's just in like a super secret 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 uranus space <laughs> so yeah um there's that. He, he's not out there doing Ganesha things. <laughs> he's like the direct opposite of Ganesha. <laughs> I am Uranus. Yeah, that, that, that'd be strange. But, uh, yeah, I guess that clears that up, so there's that, but other than that, I mean, pretty much what we expected. I mean, it was fine across the board. The, uh, the combat sections were interesting. We got to hear the Argonaut bell the gong, whatever you want to call it. You know, that was, it's that was bell. cool. The bell. It's um, a bell. It's literally the whole, like, play on its namesake. Right. So, uh... <laughs> and, and he went full uh, Saitama, so that was fun. Uh, also, uh, I guess uh, interesting to note that he went Argonaut, punched uh, Leto? Leto? The lizard Something guy. Like Something like that. In the face, full Argonaut, and he just kind of walked it off. <laughs> To be fair, though, it still was only a punch. It wasn't, like, an actual real attack. Right, it was still just a punch, but still. It's, that's pretty impressive that he just kind of walked it off. So uh, these creatures can definitely hold their own. Um, so when we get to what is obviously coming in the next episode, which, you know, e e the Ecolos Familia is lurking behind them, shadowing them. Um, to what end? Well... Actually, never mind. We know what the end is. Uranus was using the Hermes pointed it out. So um, yeah. Uranus his... is using Bell's group to bait out Ecolosis Familia, who are currently uh, exploiting and slave trading the intelligent monsters. Right, right. 
So it'll be interesting to see how that's handled, whether the monsters trust Bell enough, like just at the drop of the hat here. Um, but I assume they'll be fighting against the Kalos Familia immediately, so, you know, you're gonna have to take your allies where you can get them. But, yeah, uh, this brings up a whole other crazy dynamic for this world, as we talked about before, so this confirms it. Again, uh, I assumed it'd be like a handful, you know, not dozens. You know what I mean? This, this is a pretty uh, large area of the dungeon, and uh, a very wide variety of uh, intelligent monsters, so uh, this is this is going to be a thing, uh, especially when Ice gets involved later in the season. So, because we know that's coming, you know, with with the whole intro and her, uh, especially what they seeded at the end of season two, um, with her. So, it, it should yeah, be pretty damn that, interesting. Yeah, the fact that Uranus is taking the stance he is it definitely seems like that's gonna be what one of their end goals is for if not this season just the show in general is trying to uh establish some sort of more permanent peace rather than as it is right now it's basically just sending wave after wave of adventurers into the tower just to keep the monster population down so that they don't go out into the real world right i mean you got to figure there's probably still going to be a fair amount of the population of monsters that are going to be the non-intelligent versions that they will yeah. have to deal with. Like, uh, especially like the floor bosses, the, like the big boss guys. Uh, well, the, we still haven't we still haven't retouched on the floor bosses. We know there's something up with the floor bosses because the whole thing of like the 18th floors, the 17th floors floor boss going freaking berserk like it did back in season one. Where like it should have been easy to deal with, but it suddenly respawned early and then attacked the 18th floor, right? And was like super powered up. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's not like hand waved as like a one off thing. Um, but based on where the story is going, I assume we'll get back to that at some point, uh, especially with the advent of season four coming. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this season plays into the next one, um, and if this is going to be more of like a two season thing or. It's going to be a uh, sort of uh, wrapped by the end of season three, or if it's just going to be like trying to get uh, eyes on the uh, on the side or begrudgingly on the side of uh, coexistence, which is probably going to be uh, one hell of an endeavor for Bell to figure out. But for now, uh, it's definitely going to be the imminent threat of the Ecolos Familia and whatever they're trying to do. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they kind of just. It's just like a one-off episode, you know what I mean? Like, they attack, Bill takes care of it, kind of like the war game with Apollo, and that's it. You know? Um, I see this going as... Uh, Ecolos attacks, they defeat and repel Ecolos, but Ecolos manages to capture Vine, and then they have to go rescue Vine and finish, like, wiping out the rest of the Ecolos familiar capturing them. Right. And rescuing any potential, like, remaining slave monsters that they still have. Right. But that'll make it even more of a public spectacle, which will bring to the bring it to the whole, like, bit of, like, actually dealing with eyes and just the general public uproar that's going on right now. Yeah, I mean, this was full-on uh, rabble, rabble, rabble over here. <laughs> what, what have you done about it? It's like, well, it's been, like, six hours, so... We're still working on it. You want to give us a second? <laughs> Which uh, brings up the point of we actually got to see the Guildmaster today. How about that? He's yeah. been alluded to. Um, Though in the same episode that they revealed the Guildmaster, it also revealed that he's basically just a puppet for Uranus. Right. So, okay then. So much for that. <laughs> and I guess uh, props to Bell for uh, leaving... Um, I don't remember her name, but the uh, guild clerk here, like, completely out of the loop, which uh, was probably a smart call. Loose ends and all that. So, he's learning. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, this this definitely has a lot more going on uh, and going for it than I think Season 2 did. Um, especially even at the uh, apex of Season 2 there. Um, 
while season two seeded stuff for the future on its own it was just kind of yeah it was a season two which we have going on with shield hero right now which should very season two feel um so th this is definitely a far more interesting premise for me uh, and i think it just in general so it'll be interesting to see how this is handled you know given what we know that's coming based on like the intro being fairly self-explanatory and you can reasonably assume that the intro is fairly spot on based on all the information we have on the Ecolos Familia at this point and the information we have on Ice, which will also lead to more character development for Ice and potentially we'll get more backstory for her, which we haven't gotten at all yet. Yeah, this show in general is usually pretty uh, direct with its intros. It doesn't usually obfuscate like anything really. Right. But you always have to kind of go from a show to show basis on that because like there are plenty of cases where like they will deliberately just throw wrong information into the intro just to throw you off right or they'll like seed scenes that aren't even going to happen this season like with slime in season one showing him fighting uh the paladin chick when he doesn't fight the paladin chick until season two right but uh this show doesn't really have that going for it uh so it's you, you gotta know the show i guess at that point based on their track record and stuff that's fine but uh i'd say it was a solid week um it was, while it was a little slow i'd say the pacing of this episode was pretty damn good because um, while it was slow there was still a uh, a lot that happened so a lot of interesting points raised and definitely looking forward to next week um but we pretty much know what's coming we've talked about it so i'm looking forward to it should be good um the ac action sequences in this uh this episode, this episode were pretty interesting uh lily getting to use a magic sword that was cool appreciate that <laughs> yeah once again it, it brought up a question of that i still don't know the answer of is what level haruhime is because we know everyone else is level we know like i said Bell and, Mik and uh, Makoto are three. Welf is two, and Lily is level one. But we don't know what Haruhime's level is. Yeah, I don't think they ever uh, stated that, like, um, from the Ishtar Familia or even Aisha. I don't think she even mentioned it. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure we would have freaking noticed and pointed it out had one of them mentioned, like, oh yeah, she's level X. You know what I mean? So, uh... Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's not been stated as of yet what her level is. Right. So, I guess it doesn't really matter based on her uh, her ability, but one would assume that all she has going for her is her uh, major support ability, and she has, like, very little uh, anything else. Yeah, from what we've seen, we haven't seen her be able to use any other... Uh kitsune sorcery or anything like that that's the only thing that she knows how to do that we've seen is just the level boost which the level boost is strong but she herself doesn't seem to have any sort of fighting potential right fighting capabilities at the moment capability and potential two different things obviously anyway um the only other thing i really wanted to get out here was uh you think that based on the fact that the Ecolos Familia has been dealing with, you know, slave trading on these intelligent monsters, do you think they have like a a pseudo I win button for them? You know, that will incapacitate them without much effort? Do you think that'll be a thing? I, I doubt it. From what we can tell, it seems like they're just basically picking off the weaker stragglers and or the ones grabbing them when they first wake up. But that the ones in the village are mostly safe because they have the bigger, uh, stronger members like Leto and stuff like that guarding them. Right. Which he has built up a sizable uh, armory, it seems, uh, just uh, knocking people out and stealing their junk. <laughs> yeah, it's presumably if they had some way to easily incapacitate him, then they would have already dealt with him. I guess that also brings up the question, do you think the Ecolos Familia knows about the Secret Village or that well, they're they waiting yeah. for this yeah, to they, occur? 
they don't know the, they wouldn't know the location of the village or they would have already attacked it probably but uh i'm just saying in general they probably would have prioritized like targeting leto uh if they had some way to easily just capture him right yeah we'll see um but i'd say it was a pretty reasonable week uh so definitely looking forward to seeing how this story arc progresses and what it's obviously leading to which is fine uh well while you might know the beginning and the end it's the uh the journey that matters so uh even if the end is paramount uh, someone basically says um <laughs> uh, the journey is still very important so uh i think it'll be a fun ride this season with this so you got anything else age no nah, not really Alrighty then looks like we're talked out for the day uh so ladies and gentlemen yeah speaking of I i'm over my allergies uh giving me hell so i'm gonna go deal with that after this but <laughs> Uh, I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond however you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo. This was Don Machi, season three, episode three. Once again, threes all around. So have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you to watch. Have a good one. See you next time.